actually ready for this today. I feel like I've very spontaneously put on my dungarees and felt kind of ready and raring to go, but I'm not sure that my soul and my head have like caught up with one another. In my heart, I am ready to DIY. My head is like, stop, what are you doing? No, 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 back up, back up. Well, it's been a while since I have picked up a paintbrush, a saw, a cul culking gun. But you know what they say about a woman with a culking gun in her hand. She must never be trifled with. Okay, hey friends, welcome back to my channel. How's it going? Good morning. How's things? How are you? Hope you're doing really well. Um, the outfit choice really gives it away. You know that danger is just around the corner when these paint splattered dungarees are in the frame. There's absolutely nothing you can do to stop it. The train has left the station. <laughs> and some kind of ill-informed DIY chaos is about to take place um, and all you can do is watch on in horror as I stumble my way through and keep my fingers crossed that I don't completely ruin our house. If that doesn't sound like the cozy relaxing video that you signed up for I don't know what to tell you. I wanted to make a really conscious effort to make a video that you might enjoy if you don't enjoy book stuff because I'm really worried about the fact that that has slightly taken over my life and I know that it's not everybody's cup of tea. So I wanted to make sure that I return to something today which we all know and enjoy, which is me uh, approaching a DIY job with absolutely no knowledge or experience, fully just fueled by delusion and hoping for the best. So today I'm gonna be attempting the coving slash I think some people call it like the cornices. I'm not gonna say cornice because it reminds me of those tiny little pickles, cornichons. Basically like the detailed little strip that runs between a wall and a ceiling. Um, and as you might be able to see, just to my side here, these white things here that look slightly like polystyrene gutters in my living room, this is what I'm gonna be sticking <laughs> to the walls fingers crossed. They basically just add a nice little bit of character and detail to a room um, and I think they might work wonders in here for adding a little bit more personality, not to mention the fact they're going to cover up the really messy difference between the ceiling and the walls. The paint job is terrible, things are peeling away, there's a couple of cracks and rather than fixing any of those things <laughs> I'm just gonna hide them. So let me give you a little rundown of where we are up to in here because last weekend was the bank holiday weekend and as you might notice behind me if you're particularly eagle-eyed um we got real busy with the rollers and the paintbrushes and we finally finished painting this room. So I think last time I gave you a little home update this wall here with the bookshelves and stuff that was already pink but the rest of the room was white and this was kind of like a bit of a feature wall but I wasn't convinced that it was a strong enough colour for it to be a convincing <laughs> feature wall. I decided that the rest of the room would actually look better if it was painted to match the same and I'm really, really happy with it. It feels so warm and cozy and pretty. It's a super gray day today here, but when the sun comes in, it looks so kind of sun drenched and glowy. And it's just like a delicious shade of pink. This shade is setting plaster by Farrow and Ball for anyone who is interested. So I'm sure you'll be very pleased to know that I am not going into this task entirely clueless because, I mean, I've watched a, a grand total of one YouTube video <laughs> to teach me how to do this. One that they didn't mention though is painting the coving. Um, and I think that's gonna be my first step today because it makes sense to me to paint things while they're nice and low down and at like waist height, rather than reaching up and doing the dreaded like ceiling level painting, which is, I mean, categorically the worst DIY job going. So my approach is that I'm gonna paint the coving first. What I'm currently trying to decide is whether it's a risky game. I mean, it's definitely a risky game to do that outside today because the chances of rain and getting like little rain splatters all over my lovely detailing, quite high, I think. We're gonna do it, we're gonna take the risk. Life's all about taking risks, including painting your coving. <laughs> you know what, I'm actually feeling semi-confident about this job. <laughs> I know that they are definitely famous last words. And I think I've said that about everything that I've approached by myself in this house. <laughs> Nothing's been disastrous though. Everything looks fine from a distance. So as long as this, I mean, it's high up. It's still quite muddy out there. We've had so much rain recently that the garden is like a little private swamp. <laughs> My swamp. If you, like me, had never seen a piece of coving until 
you saw some on Pinterest and then decided to go on B&Q and order some for yourself. This is what it actually is. It comes in packs of four and it comes in, I think it was lengths of two meters, which considering this is only a small room, is pretty spot on but I wanted to make sure that I had plenty and I didn't run out and that when I inevitably make mistakes I don't get stressed about it because I've got plenty to keep trying with you know what I mean so this bit is the side that you glue to the wall and then it's a nice kind of cove I guess that's why it's called coving um but it's this nice kind of like half moon shape like that and then you can see the two edges that get glued onto the wall there so the one that I have gone for is called the Intonaco range by B&Q and it says it's pre-primed which is very helpful because I didn't even think <laughs> about priming and it's also washable which I suppose is handy if you <laughs> are particularly surprised with your cup of tea and you're like Ugh! I am now going to take all this outside oh the other thing as well um obviously if you are particularly experienced at this kind of job, you will know exactly how to slot those pieces together and get the perfect corners. However, if you're a newcomer to events such as these, I was absolutely delighted to see that they sell pre-cut corners. And obviously the idea is that they are already sliced perfectly to slot together so that that can just be glued into the corner and you're good to go because then obviously you can just use straight edges against this as well rather than having to chop it all up too much it basically just minimizes the amount of sawing which if you're as clumsy as i am is always a very good thing <laughs> paint these paint these they might need two coats we'll have to see how we get on um, but then once they're dry we'll get the sticking <laughs> leave the sewing to the women you go get the sticking Okay, so I now have this nice array of painted corners, which look strangely delicious. They kind of look like pieces of Easter egg or something. So I've done two coats on these. I'm gonna leave these to dry for a little bit, but they're looking really good, really nice and neat. So I think painting is done and dusted. If you couldn't hear me out there, painting is now done and dusted. I got a little bit embarrassed because lots of the neighbors are out and about and I was just feeling like a slightly mad person if I'm vlogging while the neighbors are out and about. Super easy little paint job. I have cleaned up as best I can. We're actually going to see a wedding venue tonight. So I'm trying my best to keep on top of turning into a messy, splodgy, painty, gluey mess. I think most of the time I actually spent out there doing that was just uh, pinching away cat hairs that had somehow made their way <laughs> into the paint. It's always an absolute ruckus to get this step ladder out, but it is right by the cupboard door, so not too bad today at least i don't have to go <laughs> diving right into the cupboard so the next bit is i need to do a little bit of measuring just to put some marks up on the walls to make sure that i am sticking it in the right place and that it's not going to be super duper wonky and from my great education in how to do this it looks as though you can get different size covings for different size rooms if I'd known that, I probably should have considered that first, but I'm sure it'll be fine. And it looks like ours is 95 millimeters. So basically what I need to do. So what I'm doing up here is then measuring 95 millimeters downwards onto the wall and 95 millimeters alongwards on the ceiling. And if I do that at increments along the way, maybe like three or four, then in theory, there should be a straight line where the pieces should sit. That remains to be seen whether or not that actually has any impact on what I managed to do. Do you know what my biggest tip is for anything DIY related? If you're thinking about trying this for yourself or if you're trying any of the other things that I've ever had a go at, my biggest tip is to just tuck a pencil behind your ear because it'll instantly <laughs> give you so much extra confidence. It'll instantly make you feel older and wiser and like you have years of experience and education. It does probably help if your tape measure's straight, which mine are not there. 9.5 there. Well, I don't really know what that tells me, but it's all part of the process. Don't I have, hmm. What has just occurred to me is this bit. I haven't really taken that into consideration. Oh no, that's gonna require extra corners 
interesting. Well, we'll leave that bit till last. <laughs> So I've done the measure, well, I've done a bit of measuring. <laughs> I swiftly lost interest in doing the measuring, to be quite honest. You came here for accuracy, you came to the wrong place. I have to just keep it rolling with what keeps my attention <laughs> to get these things done. So I've done a decent bit of measuring. I've done all along here and thinking about it as I was going around, this is definitely going to be the easiest wall to do because this one has a slight bend to it, which I haven't quite really thought about what I'm going to do about that. But more importantly, this corner here is going to give me some problems, I think. So we're going to start with this one, which is a nice straightforward straight line. Uh, it's going to be above the arches, so it's already going to look half decent anyway, I think. And I'm just going to give it a go. I'm just going to see, I'm just going to see what happens. Well, bloody hell. That kind of worked. Could really do with an extra pair of hands here. Maybe this isn't a solo endeavor. Oh, well that doesn't look half bloody bad, does it? So here's how we're looking so far. I've definitely started with the easiest corner, but that feels like a logical thing to do. I'm like building myself up to do the tricky bits. But I mean, so far, I mean, I don't think that looks terrible. I think that looks fairly okay it's gonna have to be like culked along the top and bottom because we've got a bumpy ceiling I'm definitely gonna have to culk that along the top for like a really nice neat edge but anyway next step is i've been trying to logically figure out <laughs> what to do next and i don't have a very logical brain so it's proving a bit of a cha tricky challenge but i think what i'm gonna do is pop two more corner bits up there not actually glue them in yet but just kind of hold them up there in the right place figure out where they will sit up there and then make a mark where the edges are going to hit and then measure the gap from this piece to the edge that I'm going to measure on there. That feels like that makes sense. Get in Luzu, we're sawing pink pieces of weird polystyrene stuff in the kitchen. Stunning! So I've been doing a lot more sawing than I anticipated because uh, small developments which have occurred in this process include me uh, realising that our room is in fact not a neat little box with perfect 90 degree right angles for me to slot all this stuff into. Turns out it's in fact almost the opposite of that but I'm still like vaguely confident enough to say I think it's nothing I can't handle. <laughs> We're getting closer and closer to the fact that it might in fact be something that I can't handle. You may remember this little baby starring in my stairs panelling video. But it is commonly known as a mitre box. <laughs> I might have boxed at you, my friend. <laughs> One more word out of you and I might have boxed your ears. <laughs> and it's a very clever little thing because it basically has these lines in the side that you can slot your saw into. And you get all sorts of various angles. So obviously depending on which kind of join you're trying to make. Um, then that actually comes in really handy because you can just slot your saw in, it does the angle for you and it's pretty much there or thereabouts accurate. I have been doing a lot of sawing because I have had to, <laughs> let's say I've had to improvise, okay? We're improvising as we go along here. Improvisation is the spice of life. That little corner in particular with the surprise little sticky out bit has really really tested my patience but I do think we're just about getting there so I'm just gonna chop the end off of this one and I'll keep going <laughs> Thank you. 
Look at state of me. If you hadn't guessed, it's three days later. <laughs> the most predictable plot twist of all time happens with every DIY job I ever attempt. The little afternoon task that Lucy sets herself. Oh, it didn't take an afternoon. Three days later, here I am looking like I've been dug up. I am exhausted, but I've done it. I've done it. The coving is painted, cut, glued and caulked. I'm aching from head to toe. There is more to tell you about this. I'm too tired right now. I'll tell you when I look a bit more alive. Okay, slightly more positive update for today. <laughs> I started this job on Monday. Today is Thursday. Did I anticipate we'd be here four days later? No. <laughs> Flashback to that moment of optimism and real positivity at the beginning of this video <laughs> where I, I literally thought this would take me a couple of hours. And I think if you were in a room that you had absolutely done up to scratch, maybe a new build that was like very straight walls, very flat ceiling, you'd be absolutely laughing. And actually the easy corners of this job were a really easy job. And I was having a great time over on this side of the room. It was when I reached this side of the room that things took a little bit of a turn. There's been tears, <laughs> tears of actual frustration have been shed over this job. There has been blood. I won't tell you about that one. There's been sweat. I won't tell you about that one either. And this side of the room ended up being a really tricky task because we have a dipped ceiling, it turns out. Um, we had an extra corner to navigate my way around that I had no idea how to do it because the ceiling is uneven so I couldn't even work my way easily around the bend. On Tuesday evening, I think, when Adam came home from work, we both spent about 20 minutes because he has a much more logistical brain than I do. So whenever I reach a conundrum like that where my brain just cannot compute how to solve something, normally I'll bring him in. And because he's got like the opposite type of brain to me, we can figure it out together. They work really well as a pair. But he was up on that step ladder, like drawing shapes on the ceiling, like trying to visualize it, trying to literally calculate it. And we were absolutely stumped for how to fix it because of the dips in the ceiling. We have a very lumpy ceiling. <laughs> it's all character, it's all good. Um, but it did make this task of kind of sharp angles and straight lines quite tricky. Anyway, Adam, who can normally solve a problem like Maria, was absolutely baffled. And he literally came down the step loud and he was like, I don't know. I don't know how to fix this. And I, I don't know what you're gonna do. And I was like, right. <laughs> Luckily, my personality type tore us through and through hearing those words are actually very motivating to me. I basically had to slice off so many small segments in very strange, confusing shapes and piece it all together. I was kind of visualizing it like a jigsaw puzzle. And currently, I'm not gonna show you what it looks like currently because <laughs> it looks a damn mess. Let's just say Polyfiller is doing more legwork than it probably should be doing. But I'm very confident that after the little touch up liquor paint, which I'm just about to do, it's gonna look good. <laughs> I'm telling myself it's gonna look good. And actually the neat and tidy bits, which are sort of over this side of the room, are actually looking great. Now that I've filled in all the gaps with a bit of caulking and polyfiller and stuff, it's looking really sharp. So I think once I've covered up the worst of my sins with a nice bit of pink paint, everything's gonna be swell. So I've actually got two different types of paint here. I've also got my whacking stick. <laughs> It's actually my mixing stick um, and a tiny little paintbrush, which is actually from my crafting collection, but I think this is pretty much the perfect size for what I need to do. These are both the same shade, setting plaster, um, but this one is in the, I think it's called like Modern Emulsion or something, I can't remember. Um, but this is what we've used on the walls. That needs a really good mix because it's been in the shed. Um, and this is the Estate Eggshell, which is what I've used on the woodwork in here. So like the windowsills, the skirting boards, and I also use this for the coving too. So I'm gonna have to dip into both. I'm going to do the wood touch-ups first on the actual coving itself with this one and then any bits and bobs that need neatening up along the bottom which are like actually on the wall I'll dive back into the emulsion. Just have to show you Flo who is overseeing proceedings from start to finish from the windowsill. <laughs> Oh, 
please excuse the state of me, I've just come in from errands, but I am officially done and dusted. Only two and a half days later than planned. <laughs> now that the paint has dried and all of the filler is covered up with a nice shade of pink, it's actually not looking too shabby. I feel like I would give myself maybe a seven and a half out of ten for this one. I think this is probably the most boring reveal that anyone's ever done in the history of YouTube DIY videos, um, but I'm very excited to show you it anyway because I feel like it's finished the room off really nicely. So it might not look like much, but to me, this is a really good little finishing touch that's actually made quite a lot of difference to how sort of finished this room feels. I'm pretty impressed with my handiwork up in this corner here, right up here. Don't look too closely. Like all good things in life, it looks much better from a distance, but there's a little angle going on there, which I'm not half proud of. <laughs> I might have had a small cry while trying to solve it, but we got there in the end. There's not much that a good cry doesn't solve. And this is my handiwork on the bent bit. So it does look slightly wonky, but that is literally the shape of the wall. So I feel like that's okay. So here's a quick little view of this side as well. We need loads of new artwork up here. I'm trying to decide what to do with it. But that, that little view there, that is a pretty little view. And that is officially the difference that a little finishing touch can make. We do need a new lampshade. This has made me realise. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a little bit of a mini one, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. I feel like it's definitely not the most exciting job I've ever done. Uh, but maybe a little bit encouraging if you've been thinking about doing this yourself. I think if you live in a house that's like 50% less wonky than ours, or even less if you're lucky, this is actually a really straightforward, really doable job. So if you've been thinking about it, I have full trust and faith that you can do this one. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry if this was a little bit of a random video topic, but I'm hoping to document like lots of these little jobs along the way, just kind of as and when time pops up for me to do them. But I'm basically trying to get the house to a point where it might be worth getting someone in to have a little look at it so that we could consider moving house. I mean, we've been here five years at the end of this year. So maybe this summer, if we start kind of thinking about getting the ball rolling with that, I'd just be really interested to know as well. And that is me done and dusted. So from me and my shiny new coving, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.